We're with you. That's the message from the Senate Caucus of the All Progressives Congress to President presidential aspirant Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Is he now the man to beat amongst the presidential hopefuls in the All Progressives Congress? Also on the breakfast, relief might be near for customers of commercial banks in Nigeria as House of Representatives is set to investigate alleged excessive charges and bank transactions. We will have analysts, analysis of this with an expert. And we dive into the headlines on the pages of the nation's national dailies. This is The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Good morning and welcome to the program. I'm Kofi Bartels. And I am Messia Bopo. Very good morning to you. It's a brand new day. Of course, we have analysis of uh, fantastic and uh, very incisive stories for you with experts coming up on the program today. Uh, but let's uh, get things rolling with a look at the trending stories in Nigeria um, and around the world. We do this every single day time on this program. Mercy, quite interesting ones uh, coming up. Uh, we begin with a viral video of National Youth Service Corps members. And uh, the last time we talked about a video um, concerning National Youth Service Corps members on this program, it had to do with um, a proposal, if you remember, um, where one of the National Youth Service Corps members had the, the liver and the boldness to propose to a military officer. You know, I was um, wondering what you were going to say. I was wondering why it was. But well, well, this I time, remember. this time is something different. Um, you have a, a viral video uh, on social media showing uh, a female core member uh, being given what is called a lap dance. Now, I don't know what that is. Maybe Miss, you can help me explain. What is a lap dance? But she has been giving a lap dance to a male counterpart. And the video has attracted a lot of attention and uh, mostly condemnation from Nigerians. It also showed the core members engaging in a sort of erotic dance. And I'm sure our viewers can understand that we uh, cannot show them the video at this time. But if you want to find out, you can simply go on online and search for it. Well, the National Youth Service Corps, NYSC, yesterday said it has launched an investigation into that viral video of core members dancing uh, at a yet-to-be-identified orientation camp in an erotic manner, uh, giving a female core member a lap dance. Mercy, wonders they say shall never end. A, a male copper was also seen hitting his organ. Now, I'm not talking about a pipe organ here, but uh, let's leave it at that. He was seen hitting his organ against the female's organ, uh, with uh, a copper head saying, give him well. I, I don't know what's going on here. Well, so uh, um, following that video, I mean, you would, uh, unfortunately, we can't play that video for you, but that has generated a lot of conversation and you have Nigerians condemning it uh, because uh, you could see some erotic and uh, erotic dance and style and what have you on that particular video. But um, it's okay to have um, the director, the deputy director of public relations and media saying, hey, we condemn this as actually an irresponsible behavior in their words and uh, we're investigating. Of course, we'll, we will actually find out those involved and they will be tried according to the scheme, the rules set out. But let's even look at it. Not forgetting that a lot of persons have called that this scheme should be scrapped. That's the NYSE. If you look at the scheme, it was set up in 1973. I mean, during the uh, military head of government. It was, during, it was set up by a military government, uh, Yakubu Gawan, at the time. And the essence of this was shortly after the uh, civil war. The, the purpose of the NYSE scheme was for, you know, reconciliation, rebuilding the nation, uh, reconstruction, and what have you. So you call it the three Cs. And that's the reason why it was set up. So so it could promote unity amongst the people following all that has happened. It gives you know young people the opportunity to learn uh, different uh, culture, lifestyle, tribes, and probably just have them move around. But my question would be, 50 years after, have we 
reviewed the scheme? I, I really do not want to get into those who are saying, oh, it's, it's an irresponsible behavior. What do you expect? 50 years after, you're still doing the same thing. Because what, what when they get to the camp, I mean, usually you get to a camp after a week, uh, you, you know, you go through all of that training and what have you before you're being sent to your primary place of assignment. And, and but, but the question now is the essence of the NYC scheme. I mean, the reason why it was created, has it leave this purpose? One would think that 50 years after or thereabout, there should be a review view of the system what, what would you expect and some people say because if you look at the times that we're in from time to time it's important that we look at some of this game I probably might not be in support of those who are saying okay let's scrap it entirely but you know some people would have um, a lot of um, reason to say let's scrap the system but one would rather think that it's important at this point to have a review of the system let's look at why the system was created has it lived up to his expectation and nothing stops it ten years after that, we probably should have a review to meet with the current realities of Nigeria you see the current issues that we're having and you would say that the essence of this is to ensure that you know young people are involved in national development and and what have you but is, is that the case would you blame them so it's high time that we look at the scheme again I really cannot tell I, I stand to be corrected here if we have had a review since 1973 of this scheme we, there's a constant need to review it to meet with the current realities of our country Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And of course, these are the things that um, uh, we see, you know, from time to time. Like we say, <laughs> new day, new drama. Um, uh, but I, I think also the, the moral fabric of society, you know, is, is something that we, we cannot continue to ignore. Um, we can't just leave it to, you know, people, the young people um, to do what they want to do. And the nation needs to, to set a moral code is what, um, you know, some people have talked about. Um, we need to have a moral, national moral code and value code. I'm not saying that the nation should have a, a religion to say, okay, don't do this. You can't be policing everyone. But, but it seems that uh, certain values um, and certain, you know, uh, morals in society have been eroded. I mean, I lived in Nigeria, in Nigeria at the time when even to, to, to wear a trouser as a lady, you'll be shy to wear trousers on the street. Even to bar punk, you know, you'd be shy to bar punk and, and, and on the street, you know, to even perm your hair as a guy, you know, to have a line on your hair, you'd be shy to that. I live in that kind of Nigeria. Now, I'm not saying all these things are right, but I'm saying that uh, certain morals and certain aspects of society, um, certain values that we had are no longer there. There are certain things that people were shy to do. Now people do them on the street. And I think... Um, uh, those who are in charge of our nation need to, first of all, fix themselves, call themselves to order, or people go there, kick them out, go there, who have some sort of dignity. Because the young people and the, the nation at large will look at the leader. You know, there's a song at the Calabar Carnival um, of a group that wears green called Follow the Leader. Mm -hmm. You understand? So, we, actually, this Follow the Leader is real. So, if those who are there can't do it, then Nigerians should look for those who can. Nigeria needs. Uh, a moral, not just the entire world. We need to set a moral standard and moral code, you know. But let's let's move on. Let's move on. Um, we have more trending stories. Uh, some sort of um, I don't know if this is good news, maybe good news for travelers, international travelers, because um, uh, it's become difficult, more difficult to travel around the world and back on international travel since COVID nineteen came on board. And we're hearing that um, uh, the United Kingdom is set to scrap to scrap. It's um, restrictions as far as COVID-19 are concerned for those who embark on international travels. This is what the UK is saying. It will scrap its remaining international travel restrictions um, as far as the COVID-19 tests for travelers are, contained, uh, are concerned. And this will be good news for Nigerians traveling to the UK who will no longer be required to show evidence of a COVID-19 test or proof of vaccination as precondition for entering the country. I mean, the, the UK in particular, um, a lot of Nigerians have had to complain more about the UK than other countries because of the cost of doing the COVID-19 test. Now, this was contained in an advisory by the uh, the Travel Abroad Guide published in the UK government website, on the website, rather. So this, this new rule will come to effect on, on Friday, the uh, 18th of March, which happens to be tomorrow. So um, people can rest easy now and travel without having to, to um, think, you know, much more 
about other things when you have a headache that you headaches that you have to you have to grapple with so but it, it brings us to the question i mean there's a lot about all of this uh, if you look at covid 19 and you understand the dynamics for us in nigeria the statistics are still going the big question that will come to mind is the question of is it safe to say that you know uh, uh, you know the virus has actually disappeared is it okay to say that the era of covid is gone and we're able to just move about i mean as as much as it sounds like good news for a lot of people but there are some questions that we need to understand uh, how did they arrive at this apart from the united kingdom that have lifted all of the restriction i mean you don't have to uh, show whether you're vaccinated or not let's not forget there was a time nigeria was on the red list i mean almost the entire continent on the red list it got a lot of people talking and so what is different right now how, how did they get to that point not forgetting that we in nigeria were still here you know counting the statistics i mean putting out the figures for today i'm sure that there's a report from yesterday that we're still going to be upholding how many persons have contracted the virus and if you have the united kingdom among other countries for instance you have canada also saying uh, restrictions being moved as well not entirely but you find out that some people are saying oh take off the nose max so it, it it calls for a lot of concern and some of the um what you call them again uh, the conspiracy theory that a lot of people held it, it seemed to be you know some persons want to add one and two together and like so how how, how did we get at this point? That's the question. No, so, it's a, it's so, a good so, one. So you, you've removed the restrictions, but COVID-19 is still around. So, is COVID-19 so, still around? So, why so are we why taking are we the entire restrictions? So was it that you were deceiving us before now? Exactly. But I, I think, I think um, the conspiracy theorists should go and um, take a, a bench, sit down, mm. you know, because at the end of the day, um, it's not as if COVID-19, you know, we've been learning as we go on, you know, you can't, you cannot deny that people have died. I mean, I don't, what are people conspira conspirating or theorizing about? People have been killed by COVID-19. People no. have died. I know people who have been affected and they just managed to scrape through with their lives. So what are people theorizing about? No, but, the but, thing but, is this, we, we, we're learning as we go. We're, 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 we're discovering as we go. And then we have to, now we've got the point where we realize, okay, we have to learn to live with I'm, as i'm as i'm speaking to you parts of china on lockdown are you aware i'm very parts aware of china so what are people talking so about? it's very so, contradictory so these, countries, these countries um uh, are saying you know what we should we need to start learning how to live with the virus and you know there's there's no, nothing that stops people from making a decision and uh, along the line saying let's review let's so, review so you know i hear people saying some very very illogical you know things like People are crossing in from uh, Ukraine into Poland, Ukraine into um, Hungary and other countries. Uh, they're not asking them for uh, uh, mandatory quarantines or vaccination and, and for their papers and all that. I mean, this are, this are, I, don't I don't think that sense. I don't think that people who are asking you know, these questions are, you know, as you would say, I, I don't think that uh, it's not within their sphere to ask this question. It's not a thing to ask. I don't think that it's not a sensible. Situation. I don't it think is not. No, I, I'm you, not talking you know, about the war situation. It makes a mockery of, of everything, really. I'm not talking about so, the war situation. Oh, you, now. you've been asking for for COVID nineteen uh, vaccinations. You've been charging people. You've been asking, making uh, policing restrictions. Now people are fleeing. How come they're just crossing into? I'm, I'm not even talking about, you know, I'm not talking about what's happening in Ukraine and uh, Poland. I mean, uh, people moving from Ukraine and Russia and trying to find some safety. We're talking about the fact that all of a sudden you have this. We're not saying that countries can act, but we understand the impact. We understand the dynamics. We understand the intents of this virus. Yes, it's real. No one is in, in doubt of all of that, even though you do have a lot of persons who don't believe it. But, you know, it's a scientific thing. And then one of the queries at the time where you had... Uh, uh, you know, the restriction on some African countries, I mean, almost the entire continent. Some people say it wasn't scientific. It wasn't, it, it didn't follow the entire process to arrive. And so one would expect that for a country because you also have, even in the United Kingdom, some ministers are being queried for actually taking off because the surveillance also have been taken off for COVID-19. And so people are saying, why is this happening? Because the virus is not over, the pandemic is here. One would expect that there should be a logical, a scientific explanation as to why you were asking that people can come from the same country is not how many months again how many months have we had this so i think it's just normal for people to question all of this uh, not necessarily you, you, saying you, you, that you, oh you, you, you're right you're absolutely right on that because you know the um the uh, british prime minister boris johnson has uh, had to answer some questions 
over a scandal, you know, when he was telling um, the British public to to stay at home, to social distance. You can't meet your loved one. You can't see your your, your parents or your grandparents. And the, the British public, they, they restricted themselves and went through the pains of being alone for a long time. Uh, he and his staff, uh, it's been revealed, were having a, a party, you know, having a romp. They were, <laughs> and they were, they, were, they were catching crews, let's use a Nigerian term, <laughs> at, at number 10 Downing Street. And the pictures are out there and, and the probe has been launched and, and some have said, okay, you know, all these restrictions have been slowly lifting. Maybe it's just a way of um, uh, 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 assuaging the, the British public. Let's move on. Let's move on. We have more stories. Um, the, 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 the figure, the woman, the, the lady Bloody on quality. the 20 Naira note, you know, sometimes it's easy to, to just use a 20 Naira note because now what can you buy with 20 Naira? I haven't had 20 Naira in a long time. You know, so we need so to. So do we still have that note around? You can see the lady. You know, she seems to be engaging in some sort of pottery. Now that is Ladi Kwali. She's a celebrated Nigerian potter. Um, I mean, she's done a lot of work with her, with clay, with her pottery, and you can see pictures of her uh, taking it all around the world. Um, she was an educator, a ceramist, a glass worker, and a porter. She helped introduce the international community to the beauty of Nigerian art through um, the intricately decorated earthenware designs. And these are things that we need to pick up and harness. That's why we need to put the right people in power. These guys who are there, I don't know. Mercy. We have a lot. I mean, our tourism industry is almost dead, if not dead. Look at this. Now, we are not celebrating here in this country. Google. Google, Google. How to do How to do a doodle. The Google doodle is the picture you see um, when you go to your Google.com and you want to enter the I saw, search. I saw that search. yesterday. Yeah. And, and Google was the one who was celebrating her. Our politicians are fighting about who will be party chairman. <laughs> no, see, you know what? You know what? People should just be using these things to learn. But, but thank you, Google, for celebrating this lady. You know, even though our authorities, are, I don't know what they're doing about things like this. I think it's great to see that Nigerian uh, arts, Nigerian um, um, celebrities, those who have done impact, let me use that word rather, uh, are being celebrated. These are the people we need to celebrate. Uh, like, like you rightly mentioned, so the question here now is the issue of, I mean, a lot of persons have said, what's the problem with Nigeria? But it's just typical. It's typical of leadership amongst other issues, not necessarily. Uh, so you just see that wherever your mind is, you would always chase what it is. It would always be a reflection. So it just shows you that um, we, we don't really pay attention to this. But like you said, Google, we appreciate yeah. the fact that you yeah. remembered Ladi Kwali. Uh, I mean, we saw the doodle yesterday. Oh, this morning, I didn't see that again, but it's fine. Yesterday, yeah. it was quite... You know, you know, the, the, but the, but the, the question that I yeah. ask is, I haven't seen the 20 Naira note. Have you seen it in a while? I haven't really... Um, I, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't had, had the 20 Naira because, note. Because you're a big girl. No, it's not you because know, I'm a big girl. Don't put... doesn't deal in small <laughs> denominations. Don't worry. I'll take it to where you see 20 Naira note. No, but, but in a while, I haven't, you know, mm, had the 20 Naira note. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so it feels like I've forgotten that it's a 20 one buy, You can buy some sweets with 20 Naira. No, I haven't. I haven't had the twenty naira yeah. note. To be I very mean, honest, I, I think a hundred naira, fifty. I remember here. Yeah. A hundred. I haven't seen five naira. Do we still have five naira circulation? Uh, it, I don't think it's been withdrawn by the government. It has been withdrawn. It's still there. So, but, but have but you seen five naira in, in a while? I haven't seen that in a have while. Have you seen ten naira? I think I've seen ten naira. I got Recently. Some I got some change. Because I think that yeah. these denominations, yeah, so uh, somehow, it's not like the government has withdrawn. I mean, no, uh, I haven't heard any official statement, but it feels like you go buy some of ten naira, they give you change. Okay. Yes, yes. But I mean, for, for some younger people, the only um, thing that can ring or resonate with them as far as Ladi Kuali is, is concerned is the Ladi Kuali Hall, of one of the uh, popular and prestigious hotels in Abuja. Um, but this is, this is someone that we need to celebrate. Um, she is a great Nigerian. These are the people that we should be placing up there for our youngsters to see. You know, there's a young chap, a kid in, in Port Harcourt, who was pictured or videoed and put the, 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 the filmed him. Uh, with a phone and put it on social media. They asked him, what do you want to be when you grow up? Let me just use a pigeon parlance. He said, I won't be senior man. You know, <laughs> What's senior, senior man, man? <laughs> in, in Port Harcourt, if you go to Diob, all right, in the area of Port Harcourt, you know, it's like that jingly in a way of Port Harcourt, but he it wasn't that all, all the time, but it's now degenerated, deteriorated. It's, it's you know, the big leaders of, of these occult groups and stuff, you know, something called them senior man. Or you look at a big man or guy, politician or something, you know, so the young man said, I won't be senior man.
you know mm -hmm. people need to see these things so i think we need to model uh, we need to do better it. for the younger generation uh coming uh ahead all right and that's what it is because they were always i'm sure that they had that the young boy actually had that from somewhere but that's the much we could take this morning on top trending when we return it will be time for us to check out the front pages of our national dailies we ask that you stay with us